Hello friends, welcome to Help Me Coder. Recently, many of my viewers have requested me to speak about Angular, and so I have decided to create a series on the same. In this first part of this video, we're gonna look into what is Angular and what are the benefits that it brings on the table. Plus, we'll be looking into the basic architecture of Angular with some of its key components. Welcome back to Help Me Coder, the channel which talks about technology and helps the coder community out there. This is Hemant and we are going to discuss about what is Angular. Angular is a framework used to develop client-side application using HTML and JavaScript. Or even we can use TypeScript which basically compiles back to JavaScript. Now this framework is used to develop applications which can run across your mobile, desktop and web-based applications. Framework has been developed by developers at Google and now is being used by developers across the globe to mostly build SPA based applications or the single page application, which brings us to another topic of what is SPA or the single page application. Unlike the typical web application where you click on a link and wait for the page to reload, Angular gives you an experience which is more close to your desktop or mobile based application where parts of the page reloads asynchronously without the whole page getting refreshed. Now many times we have seen in our web based application as well that when we go from one page to another many parts of that particular page are the same but still we reload the same page or the same components again on the next redirects. So wouldn't it be an awesome thing to load only those components which change across the page redirects other than the whole page. So this is what Angular and single page app brings onto the table where it loads components of the page asynchronously and thus in turn bringing speed and performance on your application. Now this is a diagram which depicts the same story which I spoke of over here the page on its first request loads from the server and if on the subsequent request the major portions of the page are still the same you can load only those component which changes across page redirects asynchronously so over here you can see that on the subsequent request only those components get refreshed so this is the place where angular comes in it modifies the dom or changes the information on your page asynchronously on page redirects or page reloads now we need to look into why we need to use Angular and what are the advantages. Performance is one of the reasons why Angular is loved by so many developers across the globe. It provides faster initial load, it has change detection and it does provide faster page rendering time. They are not stopping even here. New versions of Angular are coming up with even better performance improvements. Angular 2 which was a major overhaul had lot of performance benefits over its earlier Angular version. And even now where we are having Angular 4 and Angular 5 have lot of other performance benefit. So they are improving on the performance point on various different fronts which we will see in our future videos. Now the other major point why we want to use Angular is the cross platform support. Applications which are developed on Angular can run across all different platforms. It can run on your mobile, it can run on your desktop based applications or even web based applications. Component based development. In Angular 2 and onwards everything is component and you will even hear this term the most while developing a Angular application. Components are the building block of any Angular application. They also bring code reusability and the code is even unit testable. Client side templating. Now earlier it was the role of the server to merge the content with the static HTML and draw the page and send it to the browser where the browser used to display it on the screen. But now with client side templating, it's the browser responsibility to merge the content with the data that has been provided by the server on the client side. So this client side templating release server from some of its load which is passed on to the client side onto the browsers that are there on various clients so that they do the rendering of the page by mixing it with the application logic or the data that has been sent by the server. Now one another advantage with Angular is 
the language of choices. There are a lot of languages that you can write Angular on. You can use TypeScript, you can use ECMAScript 5, 6, which is basically JavaScript, and Dart, which is a language that is developed by Google. So you can use any of these languages, but the most popular of this is the TypeScript. Now basically TypeScript gets compiled back to the JavaScript. And this TypeScript is an open source, which was developed by Microsoft. And Angular is built on this TypeScript. Now, the question you may ask that even if, if the TypeScript is getting converted back to JavaScript, why we are not using JavaScript? Now, TypeScript is something which is object oriented and then it resembles to developers like your C sharp and Java classes and inheritance and uh, those all kind of features are present over there. So it's easier to learn and to work with the TypeScript. Also, there are a lot of different editors that are available to work with TypeScript. You can work with VS code, you can work with even Visual Studio, then you have Sublime and you have Eclipse, etc. and etc. Now let's look into the various different modules or terminologies that are used in Angular application. I have listed down eight building blocks or terminologies that we use in Angular and I will be running them with you to help you understand them. Now first thing that we're going to see is modules. So Angular bring the concept of modularity where you can make a single application by separating them into many modules. Now a module is a mechanism to group components, directives and services that are related in such a way that they can, they can be combined with other modules to create an application. You can think of modules as a boxes where you separate and organize application functionality into features and reusable chunks. You can think of them like packages and namespace in Java and C Sharp. Components. So components are the major building block of any Angular application. Each component that you create consists of a class where you define the components application logic using methods and properties. It is basically the centerpiece of your Angular application where it connects to your directives, metadata and templates. Now each module can have lot of different components and all these components work together to create these application. Now this component concept brings lot of code reusability and also does provide code unit testing possible. Now if I show you how this component look, we can click over here. Then if you see over here that this is a page where there are a lot of different components. So this can be one component. This can this can be another component called component two. Now this also bring code reusability. So we can use this component in various other places of your page. So this is how a component class, which I have mentioned over here as page component looks like. So it has a property and it has a method. And when you write this in TypeScript, it looks very similar to the way you define class in your uh, C sharp or if you are a Java developer, then how do you define it in Java? It very, it looks very similar to that. So you define a property and you define a method. Now coming back to the building blocks, next in line is templates. Now each component has an HTML template, which is basically a view that displays information on the browser. So template looks like a regular HTML syntax, but with just a sprinkle of uh, Angular syntaxes and custom components that you create on the page. Now, if I show you how that syntax looks like, so if I click over here on the template, so this is how the uh, page of a template looks like. So here you see all the HTML syntax like h2 tag and page tag and div tag, then ul, all those are HTML tags. And then we have a sprinkling of uh, Angular syntaxes and the custom components uh, over here. So if you see this message, which is which is which we basically called as interpolation. So interpolation is nothing but just that you push string or calculated string values or text between those HTML and elements. So to do that, you have two curly bases, and inside that you have that. Uh, key property 
uh, value that you want to display over there. So this is how the interpolation value is displayed. So we will dis discuss on these things in our later part of videos. But this just to give you a highlight that this is how interpolation is done. And this is how we push content from components uh, into this uh, HTML template. Now if you see over here we have some directives as well. So these are called structural directives which are responsible for your HTML layouts. So this is an iteration basically where uh, it is looking for uh, in a collection of friends it is just trying to print each of the friends that are in this collection or whatever uh, array or collection is this so we are just going to iterate over there so these are called built-in structural directors so we we'll look into these syntax don't worry about that if you don't understand them then we will look into that in our future videos so the major point to take away from here is that this is what template is so every component has a corresponding template a template looks like HTML only thing is that in some portions of your HTML template you will have some uh, angular syntaxes now let's again go back to our uh, building blocks now let's look into another building block called directives so just now we saw templates which are HTML with some sprinkling of angular syntax and custom components that uh, are displayed between the HTML tag. Now this sprinkling makes HTML template dynamic. Now when Angular renders them or when Angular renders these HTML templates, it transforms the DOM based on the instructions that have been received by these directives. So these are basically the instructions that leads to the uh, modification or transformation of the DOM element or the on your uh, browser now there are various different kinds of directives you can there are some predefined directives you can build your own custom directives as well let's see major three kind of directives that we have in angular we have component component that we studied just now or looked into just now was uh, is a directive which is a directive with a template and uh, we have an attribute directive where we modify the appearance and behavior of an element and then we have a structural directive which basically modifies the DOM layout. We just saw the structural directive earlier where we use ng4 that was a structural directive. Now uh, attribute directive if you see over here if because this one we have not seen till now so we specify the directive at the rate directive over here then we specify the selector like the app highlight so over here if you see if you say p app highlight or paragraph tag and app highlight so this is not part of the dom so we are specifying this directive over here now in your class over here you can specify the functionality of this what this has to do so you can specify uh, whether it will change how it will highlight the color or it will change the color or it will make it even bigger or smaller so you can specify that kind of functionality in this region so this is called the attribute directive and then component we have already looked into it and uh, where we have uh, the selector and the template url so this is a directive with a template now let's go back again to see other building blocks which is metadata now metadata is used to decorate a component class so as to set the expected behavior of that class. Now to join the component to its view or to process component class and then connect it to the HTML template, we use metadata. You can even say that unless you provide metadata, the component class is just a plain class. It is once you add the add component decorator, then only it identifies the immediate class below as a component class. So to basically generate a view, we need three building blocks, at least I can say, which is component, HTML, template, and then the metadata. Now let's get back to another building block, which is data binding. Now, if you would have worked with jQuery or JavaScript, then you would have known the pain to push data values into the HTML control. We always had errors and we even find difficult to do the same. Now, Angular supports data binding which is a kind of a connection between your view and the application data or we can say as a component. Now this data binding makes applications simple to read, write and maintain as these operations are maintained by the binding framework. 
So based on the flow of data, we can have three different kinds of binding and each kind of binding can be achieved by using different methods. Like for example, from view to source, which is like HTML template to the component, we can use event binding. Then from source to view, which is from component to your HTML template, we can use property binding or interpolation. Then a two way binding where we can, which is, which is basically from view to source and source to view. We can use a combination of property binding and event binding, or we can use the ng model directive, which is used while creating data entry forms. To see this, we can use a architecture diagram that we have over here. So over here, we can see that if the flow of data is from component to the template, we can use property binding or interpolation. And if the flow of data is from template to the component, then we can use event binding. And if there is a two way flow of data, then we can use a combination of both property binding and event binding, or we can use ng model. Now I will get into the detail of these in future videos. Now let us go back and see other uh, building blocks of Angular. So which is services. So for services, let's take a scenario. For example, you have a component that you have developed and it got famous or we can take another scenario. We have an application and now this component is required in various different other places. Now are you going to develop that component again and again? Or instead, the best way be to use a service so that we can share that component to other parts of your application and bring code reusability and also reduce in turn the extra overhead required to develop, debug and test the duplicate code in multiple places. Instead, we can have it all in single places. So we have to debug once, test once and any changes have to be done once only. So this brings us to the last building block that we are going to discuss over here, which is dependency injection. Now this is related to the services. Angular uses dependency injection to provide new components with the services they require. So instead of directly referencing these services into new component, which is not advisable because anything changes on the services side, then you need to update all these components that are referencing this service. Instead, what is advisable is to inject these dependency into these components. This will not break your component in future if anything changes on the service side. So let's finally go ahead and look into the overall architecture of uh, Angular and how these all building blocks sits on that architecture. So over here we can see this is a module. These are the components inside this module. Then we have template. We have metadata, then we have seen how the binding works over here. Then this is service and then this is a dependency injection into the component. So this is the overall architecture of the Angular. I would suggest that you take a look on this overall architecture for some time and see how all the building blocks that we discuss fits right into this architecture. So in this first part of the series, we looked into what is Angular, why Angular and what are the various components or the building blocks of Angular. We also had a look into the architecture of how those building blocks fits into the place. Now in our future videos, we will be looking into the details and we'll get our hand dirty into the how we code into Angular, what is the uh, folder structure of Angular look like and how do we set up Angular onto your system. We will, we will be coming up all these things into our future videos. Please do remember to like and subscribe our channel Help Me Coder. And thanks for watching and happy coding.